Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Harun Ahmed. Um, in this video, we're going to be talking about the history of intellectual property laws. So the history of modern intellectual property laws actually goes back to uh, 1474 uh, with the Venetian statue which was signed in Venice, which is in Italy. Um, this, actually, the, this is actually the beginning of the modern IP laws. This is followed by um, the Statue of Monopolies, which was um, agreed in England, and that was done in 1624. Next event also happened in England, and that is called the Statue of Annie. This was done in 1710. After that, um, there was a multinational agreement, which is referred very commonly in patent laws. Uh, that happened in Paris, which is in France, and that's called the Paris Convention that was signed in 1883. After that, the next two agreements or uh, timeline really relates to copyright laws. Uh, the first, it began in 1886 with Bernie Convention. Uh, this is primarily in relation to copyright. We will discuss each of them in detail later. Um, after Bernie Convention uh, in 16, 1961, Rome Convention happened. Um, this again relates to copyright. Um, and finally, in 1995, we have TRIPS Agreement. This is the landmark agreement, and we're going to be talking about in detail about this agreement um, in the coming slides. So let's talk about each of these um, landmark events in patent history details. Let's start with Venetian statue. So Venetian statue, um, as you can see this document, it's written in um, ancient, um, ancient language. It was uh, actually established in 19, on 19 March uh, 1474 in the Republic of Venice, which is part of Italy now. It's written in old Venetian. Uh, it's the first statutory patent system in Europe. So it's actually the first time uh, that it, there was any written statutory uh, agreement regarding patents in uh, in Europe. Uh, this is the earliest uh, coded patent system in the world, as I already explained. Um, and according to uh, this statute, uh, patent can be granted for any new um, and ingenious devices not previously made provided it is useful or it was useful now this last part it was useful is still the basis of um is the basic principle of modern pattern law so even if you go all around the around the world uh, and, and read uh, different pattern laws this clause of usefulness is always there and these pattern um, legislation refer you refer to the venetian statue for um for for the, uh, for, for this reason for the usefulness of a patent or a copyright all right uh, so after a uh, statue of um after that, so after the Venetian statue, um, we jump to um, 1624. Uh, and on the 29th of May 1624, uh, uh, the Parliament of England uh, passed um, a statue which is called Statue of Monopolies. Now, there is some history behind it. So previously, um, so after um, um, Venetian, um, uh, uh, sorry, after the Venetian statue, oh, I keep on forgetting the names. So after the Venetian statue, um, the kings in England would grant um, uh, patent rights to even um, useful commodities like salt, spices, um, uh, you know, mines, uh, and this actually resulted in inflammation uh, of um, the price of the commodity. For example, is Elizabeth one J and James one uh, utilize um, uh, patents? They would actually they had the power to grant patents to uh, applicants and uh, utilize these um, these patents for uh, commercial gains of, of the empire. Now, because of the outcry, uh, the British Parliament curtailed the monarch powers and passed um, um, a statue which is called Statue of Monopolies. Um, and this is the first expression of English patent laws. This is actually the first time that the England, Parli English Parliament passed a law regarding patents. 
Um, this is described as one of the landmarks in the transition of England's economy from feudal to the capitalistic, as I explained previously. Um, all the authority in relation to pattern wa uh, was invested in the monarchs. Now the parliament um, assumed um, power and, and kind of streamlined things for pattern process. Um, and the statue of Monofoli is again just like um, the Venetian statue is usually referred in modern um, pattern laws um, and it, it marks a key moment in uh, the evolution of pattern laws. Uh, in current scenario, uh, this uh, statue of monopolies, you can find a reference to this statue in um, Australian and New Zealand laws, um, and that's why you know it's a cornerstone in in modern laws. Even in the UK Parliament, like in the UK pattern laws, it used to be the basis of their law up until 1977. That is when the UK joined um, uh, European Union, and uh, th since then they've been following the European Pattern Commission. After um, so after that, the, uh, the, the next um, after the statue of monopolies, um, the English Parliament passed another um, statue, which is called the Statue of Any. Uh, the Statue of Any is called so because it was passed in the reign of Queen Any, and there is a history behind it as well. So prior to this act, um, copyright in Great Britain was provided to uh, private parties um, or stationary companies. Uh, which, was, which is what they were called. This led to public unrest and the parliament passed this act uh, in Queen's any reign. That's why it's called um, the Queen any, um, the statue of any, after Queen any. Um, so this is essentially a copyright act. The first one, statue of monopoly, is actually a patent system. So the difference between copyright and uh, um, a patent um, you know, we can we will talk about this difference in detail in other videos, but let's stick to the whole general idea of IP. So IP is there, and then there are like patents, copyrights, so the two different branches of the intellectual property. All right. So statue of any was um, established again this time by the Parliament of Great Britain on the tenth of April, um, seventeen ten. It's also referred as sometime as Copyright Act of seventeen ten. So according to this Copyright Act of 1710, um, copyright could be granted for 14 years with the possibility of renewal for the same duration of time. So in total, if uh, a writer or if the author wants to renew his um, uh, his copyrights, he could do it for another 14 years. So in total, um, owner of an owner of a copyright had 28 years protected years um, of his work. And according to this statute, uh, only the author and the authorized publisher can publish author work. So this is again, this l marks a landmark event in intellectual property um, or copyright laws. And this is something that um, is still enforced um, by modern uh, copyright laws. And so this statute was enforced until it was replaced by Copyright Act of 1842. So this is no longer enforced, but it again, as I said, marks a landmark event in copyright um, uh, copyright laws. And this forms again. I said this, you know, uh, mentioned multiple times. So this was a watershed event in English copyright history as it uh, transformed private copyright to public copyright for the first time. Copyright were vested in author and then publisher. So this gave more authority to author and uh, the author had to choose whom he wanted to select as a publisher. And um, this um, statute still forms the basis of multiple um, you know, modern laws, as I mentioned earlier, for example, the US, the US copyright law. So of the statue of any, the next landmark event in intellectual property history is the Paris Convention. Um, this Paris Convention um, is signed by 177 member countries and it is actually the first intellectual property treaty. Uh, this was signed on the 20th of March 1883 um, in Paris, France and unlike the previous three, this uh, international treaty is still in force. Um, 
so the way it happened was um, there, were, there was a diplomatic conference in France in 1880. Uh, Eleven countries signed the treaty in 1883, um, and then on the 14th of December 1900 this treaty came into force and other countries joined this treaty at multiple times and there were there have been several amendments to this treaty but this treaty is still um, in force as you can see from this map the majority of the world countries are part of so the green represents the countries that are part of this this convention And so the Paris Convention was essentially to protect the industrial, um, the industrial rights of uh, of countries, uh, or, or of inventions, um, and the substantial provision of uh, um, of the convention falls into three major categories: national treatment, priority rights, and common rights. This means national treatment means that uh, an inventor of one country will be given the same. Um, so let's say if um, I am a resident of Australia, but I want to register a patent in, in the US, the US government will have to give me the same treatment as it, it would give to its own national. That's what it, we mean by national treatment. So uh, essentially, if a foreign investor wants to register a patent in another country, that country has to give the same rights uh, to that investor as it would give to its own citizens. And priority right is, um, is something that we will explain in other videos, but it essentially means is uh, when somebody has a patent in one country, that guy, that person ha that or inventor has the right to um, register the patent in another country uh, in due time, um, in a specified period of time. It's called priority right. And a member country have to establish, according to this treaty, some common rules regarding intellectual property which has again industrial significance so this treaty is all about industrial significance of invention uh, this treaty is enforced by WIPO which is the World Intellectual Property Organization and is based in Geneva, Switzerland okay so after Paris Convention um, the next landmark event is Bernie Convention Bernie Convention was signed in Bernie which is in Switzerland on 9th of September 19 sorry 1886 and again, just like Paris Convention, it's still in force. Bernie Convention is all about copyrights. Um, so it's, it's, it's an international agreement governing copyrights. And it's also known um, as Bernie Convention for the Protection of Liberty and Artistic Work. Uh, so previously, if we talk about history, uh, copyrights were awarded after registration. So registration was necessary for a writer to get copyrights for his work but according to this treaty um, uh, registration was no longer compulsory and um, this convention removed uh, that uh, and uh, removed the registration process and also allowed um, uh, essentially automatic granting of a copyright upon the um, uh, up, up, uh, upon the fact that a writer, uh, if somebody proves that his work, a piece of art belongs to him, then from the date of creation, um, that work was his was copyrighted f under his name for a certain period of time. And this was actually this 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 whole Bernie Convention and this treaty was initiated by um, efforts in France just like the Paris Convention previous to this. So, as I mentioned, so copyright exists the moment work is fixed rather than requiring registration. So the moment a work is fixed depends on the nature of work. Um, the moment it's, for, for example, for a writer, the moment he writes it, or for a publisher, or for, uh, let's say, a filmmaker, the moment he um, you know, opens it to the public, that's the time when copyright starts uh, and each co member country uh, would recognize the copyright held by a citizen of another country just like the Paris Convention so member country have to uh, recognize the right of um, uh, a foreign national yeah, um, and this essentially create a universal system of copyrights and you can see from this diagram most of these um, blue uh, so most of the countries are blue this which essentially means that um, 
um, all these countries are member ex with the exception of a few as you can see they're listed in uh, you know, light um, brown or uh, gray colors according to the Bernie convention um, you must remember it's still in force so um, all the country which is most of the world countries are part of this um, this this convention or this treaty the copyright are given for 50 years after the author's death so once the author writes something his copyright starts and it they exist until his death and is until he is dead and even 50 years after his death but countries can provide longer terms so this according to this treaty countries can give more time but they cannot um, decrease the time of um, uh, the copyright for an author from uh, 50 years after his death for a photography um, so an art in form of photograph the 25 years after creation so for example if I take a photograph today it will be um, I will have copyright of that photograph for the next 25 years and for cinematography it's 50 years after showing so for example Titanic if I don't remember the exact date, but if it, was, if it was shown in 1990, then the copyright for um, uh, that film would expire in 2040. Or 50 years, so there's a clause there as well. So, for example, if the work, if the film, if, if, if a producer or if a director makes a film and that, uh, and they, and that person does not show the film, so it's, if it's not... Um, open in theaters then uh, it's 50 years after the creation of that film so if any film is not publicized and still sitting in a library somewhere then and someone and someone else comes across it after 50 years they can use it without infringing the copyright of the original uh, maker and oh an important thing so in some scenario for example if um, usually there are writers uh, if somebody finds a written work and the author of that work is not known then and somehow um, that work has um, a creation date on it then the copyright for that work is 50 years after it was published uh, okay, as I mentioned so 179 members so this uh, convention has 179 members which is huge majority of the country again it's enforced by WIPO which is World Intellectual Property Organization based in Switzerland and, 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 and this is actually a part of the UN second uh, the next milestone is Rome Convention so again this is also a convention on a treaty which is essentially based around uh, copyright law so as I, again intellectual property copyright patent laws they are different two branches of intellectual property so the Rome um, Convention was signed on the 26th of October 1961 um, and again this is also still enforced so the member of Rome Convention still have to um, act accordingly and enforce this treaty this is also known as Rome Convention for the protection of performers producer of uh, phonographs and broadcasting organization so from the name um, just like you would have learned or you know you would have learned in your courses as well and most lawyers would know to interpret a legislation or a treaty you look at its name so from its name we can tell that this um, convention or this treaty is all about broadcasting organization and the copyright of cinematographers so it's an international agreement um, governing copyrights as I mentioned early so brief history Bunny convention provided copyrights to author but there was a need to call producer and broadcaster broadcasters in electronic media so all the news channel that you see these days um, um, uh, all the drama channels uh, they are usually run as per the, uh, the Rome convention so uh, this treaty actually extended copyrights for the first time from author to creators and owners of material so Previously, um, uh, as for the Bernie Convention, copyright existed with the author or uh, a producer that he, the author, he or she, the author actually selected. Um, but now, according to Rome Convention, copyright was also given to uh, the owner of the material or the um, broadcaster. So, 
and again as you can see most of the world countries are part of Rome Convention the last uh, landmark agreement in intellectual property laws is the TRIPS agreement uh, now in, in today's world you would have uh, heard a lot about you know the trade war between America and China or the trade war between Australia and, Ch and China and you know all these countries complaining about each other to the World Trade Organization now all this is because of the TRIPS agreement um, so TRIPS agreement is essentially um, it's still in force um, it's one of the most important intellectual property agreement these days in the world um, it, it came into force on the 1st of January 1995 um, and it's run by the World Trade, Org Trade Organization now in the following slide we're going to be talking about in details of how this agreement is related to intellectual property laws but um, so some brief history so in back in um, uh, uh, in late uh, 20th century um, America U U European Union Japan and other developed countries were uh, pushing towards a generalized system of preference under a, a section 301 of trade Act 1974 which is the American trade Act. Um, what essentially these countries were trying to do was to come up with a generalized system of trading so that each country abide by a certain rule um, it was supported by most of the developed countries but uh, some developing countries like Brazil and India were against it however because of the US pushing it and other developed countries pushing it uh, this agreement uh, was agreed and, um, uh, and World Trade Organization was created to enforce the clauses of the agreement and I'll mention uh, today this is the most important multilateral instrument for globalization of intellectual property laws um, and unlike the other um, uh, agreements or treaties uh, this TRIPS agreement gives the World Trade Organization um, disciplinary powers so World Trade Organization can listen to uh, so members of the you know the, the TRIPS agreement can take their um, complaints to the WTO World Trade Organization and and and, and World Trade Organization can um, start disciplinary action against member countries for instance Australia these days have taken a case to uh, the, the WTO against China so essentially what this means is the WTO has disciplinary powers when it comes to um, enforcement of this agreement um, it also has a clause of most favored nation uh, so you would have also heard about this as well in recent time for instance Canada and America most favored nation to each other Australia and America same Pakistan and China the same so countries under this agreement can have can call each other or can can enter into arrangement and, and make each other as most favored nation so this means according to this clause they will have like more ease of trading with each other uh, this agreement requires member states to enforce section of Bernie Convention, Paris Convention, as I mentioned earlier. So Bernie Convention, Rome Convention, Paris Convention are still in force. So this trip agreement actually requires the countries to abide by those the clauses in the, that agreement. Um, an important thing regarding this agreement, so it actually has put in writing that uh, databases and computer programs should get copyright protection just like any other piece of art. And as you can see in this picture, most of the world countries again are part of um, uh, the trip agreement, with the exception of few. You can see some countries in Africa and uh, some countries in in, in Middle, Middle Asia. All right. So in the last slide, we're going to be talking about what's the relationship because TRIPS is probably the most recent and the most important um, intellectual property agreement, uh, a multinational agreement to date, um, and it's in force. So let's talk about how it's related to intellectual property law. So according to TRIPS, copyright um, term must ex uh, must extend at least fifty years unless based on the life of the author. So this is the same thing as um, what we discussed in the Bernie Convention. The second point in TRIPS is copyright must be granted automatically and not based upon any formality such as registration. Again, this is the same as Bernie Convention. Computer program must be granted as literally work under copyright law and receive the same term of protection. We talked about this earlier as well. 
national exemption to copyrights such as fair use in the United States are constraints by the Bernie three-step process this we're going to explain in some other video how essentially this means that um, th there can be an exemption to copyright patent must be granted for invention in all field of technology provided that meet all other patent patentability requirements although exceptions for certain public interests are allowed under article 27.2 and 27.3 and must be enforceable for at least 20 years so again this is similar to paris convention or this is probably exactly the same as paris convention and it also stipulates that the patent the right should be given for 20 years so the first four points are in relation to copyright but then this one is in relation to uh, patent laws then trips talks about uh, ex that exemption to exclusive right must be limited provided that a normal exploitation of the work and normal exploitation of patent is not in conflict again self-explanatory that exceptions to a patent should be limited no unreasonable prejudice, prejudice to the legitimate, in, legitimate interest of right holder of computer program and patent is allowed. Now, point seven relates to the first uh, to point three, where it talks about um, the rights of a computer owner. Legitimate interest of third party has to be taken into account by a patent right. In each stage, intellectual property law may not offer any benefit to local citizen which are not available to other citizen of uh, of other trip signatory under the principle of national treatment trip also has a most favorable nation clause so all these points have explained earlier so in in this treaty let's summarize all these points so in relation to copyright so it extends the bunny convention but includes the uh, computer programs in relation to patent it extends the Paris Agreement it has a most favored nation clause and it also enforces the um, the, the multi like uh, it also enforces the national treatment of uh, inventors in different countries which was the same in Paris Convention I hope this video was helpful if you guys have any more questions please feel free uh, to leave them in the comment section I hope you guys enjoy your learning in intellectual property law